Good morning. My name is David, I'm just an everyday homeowner. I wanted to have solar. I got several quotes, and the prices I got were okay. I mean, it would pay for itself, but it took a little longer to pay off than I wanted to. And I finally decided I would just go ahead and do it myself. Package for the panels and electrical equipment from Wholesale Solar and a racking system from Ready Rack. It's just screws that screw into the ground, so it's really easy to put in. Wholesale Solar was able to provide me with a package that would give me the output that I wanted and all the components that went together to provide that. And that made it really easy for me. They were also able to provide uh, diagrams for the inspectors and permit process. I was able to put this whole system together for considerably less than it would cost to have it installed. My payoff for the system I expect to be around nine years, although it's been producing a little bit more than I anticipated, so that might be less. And I expect to get an 11 to 12 percent return on my investment. I'm really happy with what it's producing for me. Okay, materials have finally arrived. Here's 24 Mission Solar 375 watt panels, all on one pallet. And here we have the inverter and microinverters and other components in the box. All right, let's take a look at what's inside the boxes. Here we have a box of P400 power optimizers. There will be one for each panel. We have 24 panels, so there's 24 optimizers. In this box, we have our 7.6 kilowatt inverter. And this is an EV ready inverter. So we'll be able to charge our solar, our electric vehicle directly from solar power. All right. In this box, we have some miscellaneous components, a few more power optimizers didn't fit in the original box. An MC4 connector release tool and some strain relief adapters. Here we have a bag of caution labels for our solar system. A ground bus bar. Some restraint clips. Our manual disconnect box to disconnect from the utility. And over here, we have a ground stabilization fabric that we'll use to put under the solar panels. We'll put some rocks on that and that'll keep us from having to maintain any foliage that might grow up underneath the panels. And over here we have our 375 watt Mission Solar PV modules. There are 24 modules on this pallet. Each one of these modules is 375 watts, minus zero plus three percent. And here you can see the specifications. Each one of them comes with a connection that we'll use to connect the panels in a string through the power optimizers. And we'll lift one of these up so you can see the front side of the panels. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the other components that we'll need to complete the installation. All right, I've gathered together a few of the other components we're gonna need. In the back corner here, I have my six gauge bare copper. Here I have two 500 foot spools of 10 gauge THHN that will run through our conduit. Those will run from our combiner box back to the house. Here I have some 10 gauge UV stable solar wire that I will use to make the connections from the solar strings to the combiner box. Here we have a package of MC4 connectors 
MC4 crimper tool, some elbows and connector pieces for the conduit, and then we have several hundred feet of conduit that will run underground from the combiner box to the house. Here are the materials for the ready rack system. All the pipes came on a pallet and we'll just need to assemble those. All right, we have a couple of boxes that came with our ready rack system. In the first box, we have our helix, the screw that's gonna go on the end of our anchor pipes. And we have a box of those. a box of additional hardware. Fasteners. Our connection cables help support the system. covers for the ends of the rack pipes. More hardware. Boxes of connecting pipes. All right, here are all the parts we're going to use to assemble everything. This is the bracket for the end of the solar panel. This is the grounding lug for the optimizer. This is the mid-mount bracket goes between each panel. This is a grounding lug. This is the release for the cable ties, just an Allen wrench. And here is our grounding strap that goes between our panels. This is the kit for uh, cable tying the poles together. All right, here we are finding our true south using high noon and a level and a rod. And what we did is we marked the base of our rod and then at high noon, which today was 138, we marked the tip of the shadow. If you can see around the chickens, we marked the tip of the shadow with a flag and that is going to allow us to exactly orient our solar array with south. All right. All right, so we have marked our posts along the straight edge, every eight foot six inches, all the way down to the farthest corner. Now we just need to make a straight line for the other side and mark those posts. So to get our other corner, we use the triangulation method and we use another tape measure just to make sure the end is exactly the right distance apart to mark the fourth corner of our array and that will mark out the backside posts or in this case the south side posts with flags just like we did before. All right, we've laid out uh, flags along the south side straight edge. Now we have a flag positioned for each post in a straight line all parallel and perpendicular. And everything aligned with our north-south shadow that we produced at high noon. So the first step in the process will be to put the auger or the uh, screw on the end of the lower shaft and that's what we will drive into the ground. So we have a 3 8 bolt here and we'll just go ahead and assemble that. Okay, now we'll go ahead and assemble the two parts of the screw. The screw end with the lower shaft with the 3 8 bolt to that. Put our nut on the other side. 
And now we have our entire screw assembled. We just need to tighten that bolt up. Let's go ahead and tighten that bolt up. Okay, there we have it. First screw ready. Alright, so I wanted to use my post hole digger to drive these screws, but uh, we didn't have an adapter for that, so we went ahead and made one out of a piece of pipe. Machined it down to fit over the shaft on my post hole digger. And down into the uh, screw. stick out three feet and then I would like a foot beyond that so we'll go ahead and cut it here at four feet. There we go. And now we'll spread it out. and push through spread some gravel. Thank you. 
I left this corner undone so that when I trench my line in, I don't have to pull all the gravel back. So let's get to it. So a quick solution to move these brackets up and down is just take a socket that's just a little bit larger and slide it in there. That makes it loose. And then we can slide it easily up and down to the height that we want it at. In this case, five and a quarter. Pop it out and it stays right where we want it. It's just a simple, quick way to move them around. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put in a cross brace. And I set up this clamp at five and a quarter inches up from the base of this um, screw. So we'll go ahead and Use one of our bolts, feed it through into the self-tapping part of the clamp, and temp set that one. We'll go over here. We want to make sure our level is plumb, and it looks like it's right on to All right, now we can slide the upper bracket down to make the brace match until the hole lines up and the pole is exactly plumb. Once we have that achieved, then we can go ahead and put our bolt in and tighten that up with our impact driver. Okay, now that brace is secure and we can uh, go back and tighten up the other side. There we go, cross brace is in, and that makes sure that our uh, front side post is perfectly plumb. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our north-south purlins on. We're gonna use the lower set of holes. That corresponds to our target of 30 degrees, and we'll do the same for the top. The first thing we'll do is temp set the lower mounting point using the center hole. Since our vertical posts are very close to perfectly plumb, we should be able to uh, get pretty close to our angle just starting with the nominal position. So after temp setting that, we'll go ahead and move to the top and put our bolt in the lower set of holes and then we can check our angle and see how close we are. Our angle gauge shows that we are 20, we are 29.5 about, so about half a degree off. We can just make a slight adjustment to that. Right now I can see that my vertical pole is basically plumb. By moving our mount point just one hole position, that'll change the angle. And there we go, we're exactly 30 degrees. So we'll go ahead and tighten those mount points and we'll move on to the next one. Now we're going to install the cross cables. We've already installed one on the south side that goes from lower left to upper right. So we'll do the exact opposite here uh, for the um, north side of the assembly. There's a pre-made loop. We'll go ahead and temp set that bolt on the bottom. Then we will run the cable through our little turnbuckle, and there's arrows on it that show you which way to send it through. It easily slides in one side and back out the other. We just want to make sure we maintain at least a four inch loop through the bolt. Now I can slide my bolt through the loop and then go ahead and pre-tension the cable. These cables don't have to be super tight. They are just uh, motion limiting cables. So once I have that snugged up, I can put my level 
on the post, make sure it's plumb, just make any slight adjustments that I need to to get it exactly where I want it. And once we're there, perfect. We'll just go ahead and tighten up the bolts the rest of the way. And I can zip tie or cut off the remaining cable just to keep it out of the way. And we'll just continue doing that for the rest of the openings. Now we need to go ahead and run our east-west purlins. And these come with a adjoining bracket. Has a nice snug fit. We just slide them in and line up the holes. There's four bolts that we need to shoot to put it together. You can put these together on the ground or up in place, whatever's easiest for you. Okay, we'll tip that up on its side. Put our bolts in. Alright, now let's set it up in place. So I'm about to put the purlins on, but before I do, if we take a look at the shadow going uh, north-south, all the shadows are perfectly aligned, so that tells us it's high noon. And that tells us that our system is aligned true north-south. Now I'm going to take these special nuts. This one goes up inside the channel, and this one will hold down the top. And I've got my east-west purlin on here and we've spliced it together and rested one end up there. And for the size of my cells, we need to use this hole. And we have a 38 inch maximum overhang. So we've got uh, 38 inches from our north-south purlin to our east-west purlin. So that's how we know uh, we can set it here. So now I'll just go ahead and put the nut up in the channel. Set that bolt. All right. Now we'll put the rest in and tighten them up. Now that we have the racking system all put together, we will start putting on the solar panels. Now is start to connect our string. I'm going to leave space for one extra panel here, um, but for now we'll we'll consider this as the end of the string. The first step is to connect our panel to our optimizer. Our panel has a label, a plus and a minus, but the connectors on the ends are already set up to match with the optimizer, so it's pretty hard to mess it up. So the first step would be to connect all of the uh, solar panels to the optimizers. We're going to leave space for a little loop of wire that we can secure with a zip tie. And then we'll just go ahead and connect the panel to the optimizer by sliding in the connector until it snaps for both of those. And those are nice and tight. 
And then what we can do is just take a zip tie, now feed it through our channel. secure it there so our wires are nice and neat. So let's go ahead and connect all of the solar panels to the optimizers and then we'll come back and connect the optimizers in series. All right so the Sun has come out the panels are warming up we know we're producing power. Since we have each one of our panels connected to an optimizer the optimizer is going to control that voltage to about one volt uh, so that it's safe and no one get in gets injured. And we can show that by taking the output of our optimizer and a meter and uh, just checking the voltage coming out of the optimizer and here our meter is showing 1.05 1.06 volts and when we connect them all together then we'll be able to connect check the voltage at the end of the string and it should equal the number of panels so in this case 12 panels it should say 12 volts and that's how we know each one is supplying power to the string. So we'll check that once we get it all connected. Okay, we've connected up all of our solar panels to our optimizers. We've secured our wires to the rail to make sure everything's neat and tidy. So as we walk down, you can see that we have our optimizer wires hanging down, all of the solar panel wires connected to the optimizers. Now that all of those are connected, we can move on to making our uh, optimizer string connection. So let's go back to the end of our string here. Now the optimizer output has a plus and a minus. On my optimizer it's marked on the bottom and the outside wire is plus and the inside wire is minus. And I'm going to set this minus wire over this rail just so I remember that that is going to be the end of my string and uh, we'll eventually run a long wire from here all the way back to our combiner box. Then we'll take our positive wire that comes out the other side and we'll connect it to the negative wire of our next optimizer. Now we're going to make one string across the bottom which is 12 panels and then we'll make one string across the top which is an, uh, an additional 12 panels. In order to do that we'll just connect these up I'll make a loop in my wire so it's easy to, to uh, secure. And then uh, we'll just snap that together and zip tie it up to our rail. Then I'll take the positive wire from the next optimizer, connect it to the negative of the next one in the string, make a loop in my wire, connect those together until I hear a click, and I can bundle that up and secure it to my rail with a zip tie. I'll take the positive from this optimizer, connect it to the negative of the next. So we'll just go down the line doing that. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, we've connected all of the optimizers end to end for each of our strings. We've left the negative end of our lower string hanging here and the negative end of our upper string hanging here. Now, if we make our way down to the other end, each optimizer is connected in a row, positive to negative, all the way down the string in a line for the top row and the bottom row. And we get back to the other end. We have the positive end of our lower string and the positive end of our upper string hanging out on this end. Now these two will connect into a combiner box that we'll have here. And for the negative ends, we'll make a long cable that connects that end of the string all the way back down here to come into our combiner box. So we'll go ahead and make those parts. Okay, now that we've connected all of our strings in a line, we need to connect uh, one long cable 
to this end of our optimizer at the end of the string, which is our negative connection on this uh, optimizer. And we have purchased some 10 gauge sun resistant um, flexible 2000 volt wire in order to make this connection and put our own connector on the end. And this wire runs all the way down the string to where we're going to put our combiner box on. And so all we need to do is put a little loop here for our slack and make our connection to the end of the string. And then I can uh, secure that to the rail with a zip tie. All right, so that wire runs all the way down the length of our string and out our combiner box. Now we have the positive running out of the last optimizer and we'll have this cable carrying the negative from the first optimizer and that'll be uh, the ends of our string. So we'll have four wires, uh, two from each string, four wires coming into our box uh, plus a ground. And that's uh, at that combiner box, we will bring all that in and connect to our 10 gauge wires that will run underground all the way to the house. All right, we're going to use a unique grounding system on this array. Rather than putting a lug on each panel and running a number six ground wire down the whole length, we're going to use these grounding strips. Uh, these are Dynabond 8 inch grounding strips. It's a copper, tin coated copper wire with a stainless steel crimp on each end. And all we have to do is connect each panel to the one next to it. We'll just use a little rubber mallet. And now this panel is connected to this one. And we'll just go ahead and make our way down the entire string, connecting one panel to the next. And that will be our grounding system. At the end, we'll connect a lug to the end panel and run that um, all the way through to the building for our uh, final number six ground. Let's do a quick walk around. All the wires are tied up underneath. All the panels have been mounted. As we walk down the side, you can see a little space at the end. So if I want to extend the system, uh, the rack's already there. All the wires are neatly zip tied underneath, all the optimizers are connected, and everything is ready to connect to our combiner box once we dig the trench to the house. Okay, so we're going to start to put together the combiner box for all the wires coming out of the array. I'm going to use this uh, waterproof plastic box as a seal on the top, and four mounting screws on the back side, and we're going to drill some holes in it to put our uh, conduit couplings in, and we'll also put uh, glands in to receive our number 10 wire coming out of the solar array. Um, each one of those takes two wires, and then I have a small one to put the number six ground in. And then uh, to mount it to our array, I'm gonna use this bracket that's designed for a gate, and we'll I just mounted it to a scrap piece of PVC so I don't have to worry about it rotting. And once I get all of the adapters mounted into my box, we'll just go ahead and mount that right to the PVC and right to the pole. And then we'll be able to run our conduit up out of the ground into that combiner box. So let's uh, drill the holes and put it together. All right, so we have drilled our holes in our box and mounted all of our connectors. Uh, the large ones are silicone just to make sure they're sealed and don't leak. And I decided to put everything coming into the bottom of the box just to make sure I don't have any water sitting on my fittings. I can make a loop in my wire so the water drips off before it gets to it. Um, everything is mounted and ready to go. So now we can attach it to our back plate and put it on our pole. Okay, so we put all of our attachments in the bottom side of our box, mounted the box to our PVC, a little spacer to hold it out from the pipe, 
brackets attached to the pipe. So now we know exactly where to trench our lines. And we're ready to run all of our wires and conduit. So let's get trenching. All right. Okay, so we're laying out the conduit all the way from here to the solar array. And we're running a rope through the end. I just tie the rope to the end of a stake and drop it through the tube. Got a little extra running out the end here. So the rope's going all the way through. Now we're going to uh, make up the joints and have the conduits all ready to go when we run the trench. Okay, we have our rope running through our line. So now we're gonna go ahead and make up the joints with some PVC cement. Pull that rope through, there we go. Wow, that goes way in there, that's nice. Okay, we pulled our wire through our conduit, laid the conduit down in the trench, and now we are, we pulled extra wire out the end, and we're gonna put the ones together that go up the side of the building and over to that hole so that we can pull the wire through that. Okay, we've got our conduit connected up to our combiner box. We've pulled our wires through. Everything's run in our ditch. At least 18 inches deep. Most of the way is 24. have some sticks placed in there so we can bury it and the inspector will be able to see how deep it is. In this one spot I couldn't turn as tight as I wanted to with the machine so we had to pull out, cut kind of a 45 across the corner. But that worked out fine, the pipe lays nicely in an arc. All the way to the building. We have uh, two lines, one for any future expansion, which is capped off. The other one's going to run up the side of the building and into the garage, where we're running through the wall over to the inverter. So, now we're ready to bury our line. Okay, we have combined our two strings and we have the positive and negative ends down here and we can check to make sure that everything is providing power appropriately. The meter shows 12.3 volts. It should be about one volt per panel. We have 12 panels so we know 
that that string is connected properly and all the optimizers are working. So we can go ahead and connect them up to our combiner box. All right, we are going to make our connection with our solar panel. We're going to use these waterproof um, connectors. We strip the ends of our array wires and the conductors coming up out of our conduit. Right now we have a safe working voltage of 12 volts. So the optimizers control each panel down to one volt. Okay. Positive. See the goop coming out of the back side of the nuts that used to seal and waterproof the connection. Pack those all back in the box, close it up, our connection's made. Now we have a connection made at our combiner box and at the inverter. We will be able to power everything up. Okay, we have our two strings all connected up, connected into our combiner box. Coming out the glands in the bottom, a little loop in the wire so we don't have to worry about water running into our box. And our conduit goes into the ground, one empty for future and one with our four number tens and ground wire running back to the house. Mine's buried with some sticks in the ground so the inspector knows the depth. We just have to fire it up. Alright, so here we have our meter panel and it's right on the edge of a wall so we'll need to put our disconnect box uh, right underneath it so that we can have our ac come into the box and then it will go into this panel and allow safety disconnect okay so we wired up our disconnect um, brought our wire in from the garage our two hot lines run through the disconnect and then through a conduit into the breaker box. Connects to a 40 amp breaker. You can turn it on and off from there. And then this disconnect will have a physical on and off so that the solar can be disconnected from grid physically at that point and that way the line workers will be safe. Right now we just need to connect to our inverter on the inside of the garage. Okay we pulled our wires through our conduit. We have them coming out the wall. We hung a piece of sheetrock and painted behind where the box is going to go. Our wires coming out of our conduit are going up into the unit. So now we're just going to mark the bracket location on the wall and then uh, mount it up there and make our final connections and wires. All right, we marked the location for where we're gonna hang our inverter and hung the brackets on the wall. Now we just need to mount it and connect our wires. All right, so we put a screwdriver into the release bar for the neutral terminal and we slide our wire into there and release it and then it's nice and tight. Do the same for our hot 
hot leg. screwdriver, do our remaining leg. Okay, now we have all of our AC wires connected to the bus, and now we'll do our string wires to the DC bus. Okay, I have put a little piece of tape on these two conductors so that I can keep track of which string is which back at the combiner box. Uh, this is our first string and we will connect. Uh, we left a little bit of slack here so that I can have extra in case I need to redo something. We are gonna connect to the DC terminal block. We'll put this string in the top. Put the screwdriver in. Make sure it's tight. Put the screwdriver in. Pull it out. Make sure it's tight. That's first string. And we'll do the same for the second. Okay. There we have it. All of our AC and DC lines connected into our terminal block. All right, there's an activation card that we need to put into the inverter in order for it to operate. And the serial number matches the serial number on our, our inverter. So we took the face plate off and there's a slot right above the display that the card goes into. So we'll take it out of the bag and slide it into the slot. And it just clicks in like an SD card. Make sure that this zip tie doesn't push on it. All right, and that's all we need to do. Okay, we decided to hardwire our ethernet. So we put in an ethernet jack right below the inverter, ran the patch cable through the passageway and connected it to the ethernet connection on the board. So now we have ethernet and all of our other wires connected. We can put the cover back on. Okay, we put the panel back on, went through the startup protocol Everything is up and running. We are running at about 7,000 watts. Looks like a cloud just came over. We're finally producing power back to the grid. We did it. And you can do it too.